Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, coming to you from Waikiki Beach. And uh, the last couple of days, looking out my window, I can see right now there's 20-foot surf uh, breaking outside Diamond Head, a place we call Castles. And I'm, and, and I, and I'm stuck here interviewing Father Bryce Lundgren, the cowboy priest from Wyoming. Uh, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm coming to you from Waikiki Beach. I'm right above St. Augustine's Catholic Church, really right above the altar here. And I'm looking out the window, and there's 20-foot uh, surf breaking outside at a place we call Castles. It only breaks at Castles when it's really big. And it's just so interesting how surfers will walk around. Uh, sometimes, you know, here in Waikiki, our big swells come when the summer comes. And uh, during the winter, sometimes it goes flat. And the, and the local surfers here in town are like, walking around kind of like zombies, like they don't have a reason to live. And then suddenly the first big swell of the, of the, south, of the summer season comes and we're not ready for it, you know. And I saw people scrambling, paddling out yesterday and um, being in the perfect lineup and then realizing it wasn't the perfect lineup, that it was bigger. And they'd paddle out further and uh, people were getting caught inside and it was just, we were just, uh, just not ready for prime time. Uh, and that's what it's like in the spiritual world. So often... Um, it's like, God, where are you? Holy Spirit, where are you? Nothing seems to be happening. I don't, I don't sense your presence. I don't have any of that sort of leading of what I should be doing. And, and, uh, and we just kind of get complacent and dormant. Uh, and, uh, and then all of a sudden the surf's up and we're not ready. We haven't stayed in shape. Out here in, in Hawaii, we do everything in the water. We, we, sco we snorkel, we spearfish, we stand up paddle, surf, we tandem surf, we, 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 you know, we regular surf, we, we, we stay busy, we, we spend time in the water regardless if there's surf or not. So when the surf's up, we're physically fit and ready to go for it. And that's what we need to do in our spiritual lives. We need to always be ready um, for when the, for, because big surf is coming. Uh, in your life, the Holy Spirit's going to move or events are going to move and you need to be ready. And, and you get ready by just spending time in the water. You get ready by just spending time with Jesus. We have a, as our guest today, Father Bryce Lundgren. I don't usually have return guests, but uh, I love I love this man so much. I just so thrilled that I found him. He's a cowboy priest from uh, Wyoming. And if you're watching this on uh on, a, on our Zoom video version, the YouTube version, you see, you'll see a big old, that, is that your real satellite you use, Father Bryce? This is a Bronx saddle. Oh. So, uh, yeah, no, okay. it's only in rodeo. And so, yeah, what is a Bronx saddle? Well, it, uh, it rides higher on the swells of the horse, short stirrups, and then the big thing, it's got no horn. So and then this is your hack ring that you that you hang on to. So really, it's, it's a whole different ball game. What, what what tell me about that? Do you have you do you do that or have you done that or? I have road saddle bronc, and that's kind of a a fun part of my story. Um, oh, I yeah, it's just one of those things. The Lord places on your heart, and you uh, and you just kind of run with. But um, it was actually the summer of 2020. I think it was just kind of in 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 the face of kind of the fear pandemic that I decided to kind of try my hand at, uh, at saddle bronc at the age of 40. So anyway, it was pretty fun. Um, but I rode four rodeos and I like to joke. Um, if you add all four of those rodeos up, I made eight seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's like surfing people. Now in Hawaii, we will get really long rides, but where most people surf, they'll spend a whole, two hours out surfing and their total their total surfing time on the wave might be less than a minute and a half or two minutes you know sure. we're here we'll get that long of a ride on one wave but but yeah so all that all that work and effort for a total of but but it was a was it the most fun or the most terrorizing minutes of your life or well i enjoyed it i don't know if my mom did but uh <laughs> it was it was super good and it, it it's all good it's just one of those things you do but um 
I, yeah, it's, it's kind of taught me a lot, but I, I will say that it was an unresolved desire. And even after the summer was over, I was like, what the heck? I still, uh, I still have this desire that I can't shake. Do I got to just do this or what? And then I got a cold. Um, I have, I've had one horse and then my cousin gave me another horse and she was young and needed started. And uh, so me and my buddy Paul started in on her. And as I started working that cult, uh, all my rodeo desires were fulfilled. Interesting. Right? Uh, were you, were you break? What do you mean yeah. by working the cult? Yeah, yeah, we were breaking it. I mean, that's traditional language. What you call it anymore is, is starting the horse. You spend a lot of time. You don't, you don't just, um, you know, kind of blindfold it and let her buck kind of thing. You do a lot of groundwork. You teach it a lot of, oh, getting over its fears, a lot of trust, a lot of relationship. There, there is incredible um, imagery uh, in doing that. Uh, but I will, I will say, um, you know what? It, I mean, and there's just a lot of goodness there. But I will say that, like, uh, swinging your leg over a, a green colt is way more difficult than jumping on a bronc in a shoot. Really? Yeah. What what do you mean by that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're just okay. When I take the first ride on a colt, I stand up in a syrup, and then I've got to make the leap of faith of throwing my leg around, and yes. then it's what's going to happen. And there's no, uh, you know, there's no shoot there holding you still. Mm. So when you when you step on a bronc in a shoot, I mean, it's you're she's it's a bronc, yeah. but you're just you're just jumping on. I mean, she's pinned there, and you turn it loose. But it's good. They're both good. But yeah, my rodeo days are done. Uh, working with horses, no, I love it. Well, so so what 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 was the the biggest wipeout you've had right riding a <laughs> right riding a, or, or 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 starting a horse or yeah? Well, I like Bronco. to joke. Uh, probably the the biggest uh, dump I got was right in front of the rectory. <laughs> <laughs> occasionally I'll, I'll, dump, I'll kick my horses in the backyard of the rectory if I'm blowing out early in the morning to go ride and I had a couple rides on this colt and so I that morning we were going to go ride and before everyone else got up I got out and I saddled them and I thought man this is just a good time to jump on this horse they're real quiet dark and uh, I had done a little something different with my saddle and I didn't uh, introduce it to her uh -huh. And I, I stood up and I swung on and she turned loose and I wasn't ready for it. Didn't have a, uh, <laughs> a bridle on her and she went to what? in the front yard. Yeah. No bridle. And, uh, I was out of the saddle in no time and I, uh, I had a halter on, but okay. then my keys were hung up and I couldn't get out of that saddle. No way. Out of here. And I, and I kind of wiggled out and landed on the grass and, uh, and then I hung onto the halter. She wrote, burn me good. But it's just good. There's a lesson there for both of us. Well, but, what was the lesson? Well, yeah, I guess, uh, you know, never get in a hurry, you know, especially with the horse. The, the thing you always do is, is, come on, let's do it now. You know, you always want to, let's go. Let's just go. Let's go to work, you know, and you, you really do need to understand where they're at. And then um, either if you're introducing something new to them, fine. But then also um, warming them up, get getting kind of getting their head in the game before you do anything. And, and I was I was a little hasty that morning. For sure. what, is it, what do you mean getting their head in the game? Does that mean does that include an apple or something? Or are you just talking well, to them or you got to You got to think like a horse. You really, I mean, if you want a good horse rider relationship, you got to know where they're at. And, uh, you know, it's early in the morning, it's town, she's green, she, you know, she's new to everything. And um, if I would put myself more in her shoes, when her, knowing where she's at, then I'd be like, okay, let's, let's warm up a little bit. Let's do this in a nice controlled environment. And then also just go through the basics again. I was a little hasty. What are um, the basics? But, yeah. Oh, uh, what would be the basics of that scenario? I mean, you're going from, you're going from, hey, I'm out grazing like an animal to, oh, I'm a horse. And they have to make that switch. Like, oh, we're going to work now. Oh. We're, not, we're not just out horsing around. The saddle's on me. This means 
go time, work time. And I now um, listen to the man on my back versus, um, you know, my instinct, my gut, you know. Isn't it amazing? Horses are just, Cindy and I were watching, you know, she's a rodeo girl, my wife. She was a barrel mm-hmm. racer and and mm-hmm. um, a trick rider. But um, we were watching Trace Atkins' uh, Ultimate Cowboy. I don't know if you've seen mm-hmm. that series. But it's really interesting. They take all cowboys mm-hmm. from all over and they kind of whittle them down. It's like in a, a reality mm-hmm. show, but kind of a, in the in the best sense of the word. But it's really I'm, I'm always astounded by the the power and the beauty of the horse. It's like it was made for man, and man was made mm-hmm. for the horse. You know, it's just so special. Mm-hmm. But you can learn a lot about leadership skills and uh, people skills by how you you know how you work with a horse. We're talking with Father. Bryce Lundgren, the cowboy priest from what what uh, what parish do you have there in Wyoming? Well, uh, St. Matthews in Gillette, Wyoming is the is the big parish, as I like to call it, the big church. And then we have three uh, mission churches in the area, and it's up in Hewlett, Wyoming, Moorcroft, Wyoming, and Wright, Wyoming. And on the weekends, I run that mission circuit. And what what is that? Uh, what is your website? Yeah, WyomingCatholicCowboys.com. Yeah, I love that website. We every week his homilies are posted there. It's just the coolest. It, I mean, your homilies are just, just so real and gritty, and we just we just love them. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We'll be right back with more. This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up at the Bishop Markham Ranch in Goldendale, Washington. Don't Americans inherently bristle at don'ts. An independent spirit is ingrained into our national psyche, our culture, and politics. We don't cotton to others, especially the government, telling us what to do or not to do. Heard a man once say, I'm so busy doing the do's, I ain't got time to do the don'ts. Now that puts the emphasis on the right syllable. True of stellar fellow citizens who are so busy doing wholesome stuff for country, community, and kin, they ain't got time nor inclination to do otherwise. Reminds me of my old friend Christopher Shank. Our friendship harkens back to, oh, the 1960s in the waterfront of the Columbia River, later in life as Harley Biker Brothers. Chris always, you know, he put his faith in action, can design, build, and fix just about anything. He's always been Johnny on the spot for anyone needing something to be repaired, whether car, electronic, equipment, dishwasher, or someone's front steps. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Galatians, challenging them to focus on doing the do's. Said, he who rides with the Spirit ends up propagating love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, goodness, and self-control. Again, such there is no law. Can't do no wrong when you're hitched tight to the Holy Spirit. Well, as Americans, we may rightly resist some of the edicts that come down from our state government or from the federal government, but as citizens of the kingdom, we're to walk in obedience to the king. We do it out of faith and love, empowered by the spirit. Jesus summed it up this way, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my father in heaven. This is Daniel LeBoon Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Now you can journey with other men in the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue and servant leadership through Bears Man Cave non-Facebook community and our three-year school of manliness. Video, audio, and written content, as well as self-assessments help you to chart your new course. Join us at deepadventure.com. is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I wanted to invite all the men to go to deepadventure.com and join the Bear School of Manliness, 
we have Bear's Man Cave and the Bear School of Manliness are together. And what that means is the Man Cave is like like Facebook, but we got off, got off, got off of Facebook because of some can we were being canceled on at least part of our ministry was. And uh, and I just think people men like appreciate going to uh, the man cave. It's just just almost exactly like Facebook, but without all the the confusion and other paths and rabbit holes you can go down. And uh, and then we have the School of Manliness, which is a three year curriculum. And um, what's really cool is we go through it together as men. Every month we have a Zoom video chat with uh, with all of the men. And then uh, that's in the first part of the month. The second part of the month, you're, you're, you become part of a team of about a dozen men, and you have your Zoom uh, video meetups that way with just your with your small group. So it's a way of encouraging and challenging, inspiring, and we have a kind of hold our beer moments that we share too. And uh, and then there's the three year curriculum where you actually go through the uh, three uh, one uh, 36 months 36 lessons uh, that include video. Uh, audio, written content, short little segments, including a lot of Father Bryce Lundgren's uh, uh, homilies, his five-minute homilies on, on the different areas that we're, we're talking about. And um, what's happening is the men are starting to go through that with their sons. And so when you join, if you join, we can also give you a family membership where uh, your sons uh, have a login credential. Uh, they're not allowed to come into the man cave. That's just for adults. But they have a uh, their own login, so you can actually track them and work with them as you have a weekly sit down with them, and you can go over and see when they're done watching a video, they can check off that they've watched it. So it's just really a great way for men to engage with their sons and talk about real stuff. And we're just so glad to have Father Bryce Lundgren uh, as a contributor to our to our school of manliness. So Father Bryce is a, a cowboy priest in uh, Wyoming. And I just want to say, men, if you want to, if you want to uh, join us, I think we're going to try to put together something in Wyoming this fall. So reach out to uh, deepadventure.com and let, let us know if you're in that area, if you want to join us. Uh, we're going to have a, some sort of men's event out there. And uh, we're not sure what yet and what mm -hmm. date, but we're looking for September, October. And also you can go to, uh, what's your website, Father Bryce? Yeah, it's uh, WyomingCatholicCowboys.com, and, and you might have better luck just searching Wyoming Catholic Cowboys. I don't know, sometimes the .com doesn't take you right there, but you'll find yeah. it. Yeah, but yeah, it, write, write to me at DeepAdventure.com. If you go there, there's a contact uh, form that you can you know email me, and we'll get you we'll get you to this men's event that we're, we're, uh, we think that the Lord is leading us to do. Man. Never know. Sometimes the Holy Spirit's like a bucky bronco. You just got to hold on for dear life. Hey, Father, what is that sign behind you? There's a guy. There's a cowboy sitting on a, yeah. on a fence. Post. I have. I, I like that. I'm glad it shows up. My buddy Ed Weber made that and gave it to me. And uh, he said he had put on there. He says, um, "Pondering turns knowledge into wisdom." Oh. So so pondering changes knowledge into wisdom. So, you know, sick, taking time to to kick thoughts around, to chew on them, to ponder them, changes just dry knowledge into, like, wisdom. And he, he made that up. I like And, it. you know, it's cool. But it, that's exactly right. Um, I got to write that down. I have to get it. You have to send it to me with his name so I can give yeah, you credit. Yeah. I'll use it in one of my books. But, you know, the Bible talks about how Mary pondered these things in her heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. uh, um, that pondering time, uh, most... In our busy life these days, we don't do a lot of pondering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a ponderer, as, uh, as I like to say. But, uh, you know, I like to say, I like to say uh, pondering is, the, is to allow the heart to percolate. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's like, let's it, let's it just <laughs> bubble up and drift through reason, you know? Well, and what, we what, glean what, the good and reject the bad. Well, how does a cow digest its food? It's a ruminant, yes. Yeah, what does it do? Yeah, I mean, it, it regurgitate, regurgitates it, chews on it, and then gives it another go. So it does that several times. Yeah. I, I mean, I they, they're, they're a rumen, so they have four stages to the stomach or to that degree. But, yeah, several times. So they, they swallow something, they chew on it, swallow it, and then they kind of regurgitate mm -hmm. it, swallow it again. Yeah. Well, you know, mm -hmm. that's the, the, the root word for the word meditate in, in Scripture mm -hmm. is ruminate. Mm -hmm. So sure. we talk about meditating mm -hmm. on God's word. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we should do. We chew on it. Exactly. That, mm -hmm. That's why 
it's so important in the in the morning to start out with prayer. Mm -hmm. And the liturgy, the hour and mass, the readings at mass are a great way to just present yourself to the scriptures, read mm -hmm. them, and then through the day, you'll find the Holy Spirit bringing them to remembrance. Mm -hmm. And you ruminate on them, you meditate on them, you, you, and, 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 uh, and suddenly there's clarity of what that beautiful insight is that the Holy Spirit has for you, but also an application in your personal, in your yeah. personal life. Well, and kind of like you mentioned at the uh, kind of the beginning, like we stay in the water, you know, we stay in condition. Uh, so yeah. that when, the, when the waves do come, we're ready. Uh, you know, it's the same way really with the Word of God, with Scripture, that, you know, we stay in it because we it, it takes root, even if we don't understand or comprehend or, or, you know, it doesn't hit us at the time, but we're being immersed in that language and then it, it takes root. You know, it, it, it affects our our thinking and our living too. Yeah, the Holy the Bible says the Holy Spirit Spirit will bring all things to remembrance. And it's just interesting. Sometimes you're in a conversation or you're in a situation, all of a sudden a scripture verse you didn't know you had memorized oh, yeah. just yeah, pops out, you know. But yeah. it doesn't happen. My dad used to talk about the planting, you know, of uh, when you when you plant uh, seed, um, as a man, you know, the scripture verse, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And mm -hmm. so it's also a, 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 um, how, how you ponder or what you meditate on is like planting seeds. And mm -hmm. seeds just don't come d go down mm -hmm. and then grow another seed. They can mm -hmm. grow fruit of 30 or 70 or 100 fold. Mm -hmm. And my mother and my father both taught us, be careful how you think. Mm -hmm. Cultivate your mind, that mm -hmm. sweet mind that God has given you. And what are you planting in it? Are you watching bad news all the time? Are you watching pornography, which is just a devastating thing for people to do? Um, are you letting Are you letting your mind just drift, mm -hmm. uh, or do you, as Paul said, bringing all thoughts into captivity? So to mm -hmm. have a disciplined mind um, is critical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, for sure. Being intentional, things like that. What do you mean I by intentional? Thinking, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, not just to float, you know, but like, no, I'm, I'm praying now, so stop daydreaming and let's pray. You know, yeah. I mean, just be intentional with our thinking, with all our actions. I mean, there's uh, an old Latin phrase, uh, Aj Ajuris, do what you are doing. Not, it means do what you're doing, like own it, like be intentional about if you're reading, then read, you know, if you're eating, eat, you know, I mean, but don't be doing one thing and daydreaming about the other. Be intentional. And daydreaming so often isn't daydreaming. It's worrying. Yeah, there's good. Of, yeah. yeah, there, there's good daydreaming. But a lot of the, a lot of it is a fantasy or just wandering thoughts. It's Wa not, wandering it's, and, and, and worry. Um, yeah. We can't. We may, the Bible says, "May your mind be washed in the form of yeah. words. May you be metamorphosed." Is the word? May you be transformed like a, a caterpillar to a butterfly. Mm -hmm. You know, may you yeah. be, by the renewing of your mind. And so, listening to this podcast, for example, or listening mm -hmm. to great books. I listen to incredible mm -hmm. great books, mm -hmm. uh, every, an hour or so every day. Um, what do you let your mind settle on? But when you're in that, when now let's go to this, the other extreme. When you're on a, when you're riding a bunk of bunking bronco, mm -hmm. what are you thinking about? Yeah, <laughs> well, you, gotta, you don't have a lot of time to think, but it's uh, you're thinking about one thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's actually, and I, we can talk about some of that in a minute. But I, uh, it's actually, uh, it's what's so beautiful about that kind of stuff is you're in the zone. It's yeah. not even like, it's not even necessarily a thing. I'm sure surfing is the same way. You're like, you're just in the now and you don't really, you don't really have to think. It, it's like your, 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 your whole being is like in the zone of just harmony and you, uh, and so your actions and your thoughts, they're just all in sync. And, and I wouldn't say that I uh, necessarily experienced that in the bronc riding world. I experienced <laughs> it in, uh, in um in life yes in horses and i mean sports a lot of think guys do the same with that but but i think it all has the same kind of like i'm i'm uh like fully integrated and like my whole being is on mission right now and i don't really even have to like 
discipline. We're just we're just there. We're talking with Father Bryce Lundgren. God, I like being around you. I'm looking forward to seeing <laughs> you. Good. We're going to be hopefully doing a men's, a men's event in October, mm-hmm. September, mm-hmm. October of this year. Father Bryce mm-hmm. Lundgren, what's, their, what's your website again? Yeah, WyomingCatholicCowboys.com. We'll be right back with more of the Bear mm-hmm. Wozniak Adventure. Aloha. This is Bear Wozniak in my home in Waikiki Beach with another Deep Adventure moment. You know, Hawaii, we have a word, a very special word, and that word is kuleana. If you go to the restaurant here and you see someone maybe busting the dishes when they're really supposed to be waiting on tables, maybe a, someone from the mainland will come and say, I'm going to go help this guy. I'm going to bust his dishes for him, even though it's not my job. That, that guy that you bust the dishes for, that brother, as we would say here in Hawaii, will come up to you and say, brah, this is my kuleana. What are you doing with my kuleana? Kuleana is special here. It means it's your responsibility, but it means it's your responsibility. It's like you own that kuleana. You own that responsibility. It's very powerful and a very spa, uh, special word. Well, men, I want to speak to you directly right now. John Paul too, when he wrote his first book, Love, and responsibility. Aloha and kuleana. They must go together. Uh, men, so often you're neglecting your woman. You're not cherishing her. She's your kuleana. So often you let her bring the children to church. Uh, let her teach them the Bible stories. Men, it's your kuleana to lead your family, to teach them while you're on the way with them. And men, you're not cherishing your families. You're not spending time in prayer. When the children wake up a little bit early, they should see you in your chair praying. Men, it's your kuleana to pray for your family. It's your kuleana to provide for them, to protect them, to cherish them, to, to be devoted to them, to lay your life down to them. Men, step into your kuleana. It'll open your life to the greatest adventure and the greatest fulfillment. This is Bear Wozniak with DeepAdventure.com. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul. Both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com, and also on amazon.com. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak deepadventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine Oblate, we have the St. Benedict Exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Sophia Institute wants me to tell you that uh, two of, they've just republished two of my books, uh, a, Surfing, a Surfer's Guide to the Soul, which is a great book for anyone to read. A lot of non-Christians have read it and it's brought them to the Lord. But it also just talks about the spiritual journey using surfing as an allegory. And then Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. T- talk story. Father Bryce Lundgren is with me. I see a stack of my books behind you, actually, yeah, on yeah. your shelf. Yeah. Um, uh, but um, that, ta- that has great stories, but also just solid teaching on the seven virtues. So, so we're talking about that still point uh, that I find when I'm riding a big wave or when I'm mm-hmm. about to um, hit a bunker shot, you know, or those those moments when you're just in the now, and, exactly. and you and you were and you were talking about uh, riding broncos. Yeah. Well, I mean, just riding in general, but and I will say, uh, I you know, guys that really nail the bronc world i mean it, it is poetry in motion and you and you see them when they're in that zone uh it's really is beautiful uh some of my guys stetson wright's probably my my favorite bronc rider i mean he's just kind of the king chief right now but i do kind of i and this is kind of uh 
uh, inauguratory or the initial uh, uh, mission of this, but I, I kind of styled myself as a spiritual bronc coach. Mm. Kind of like you're talking about the, the lessons in surfing are translatable to the lessons in spiritual life. I think the lessons in bronc riding are very translatable into the spiritual life as well. So take them as you will, but I think uh, the first the first kind of rule um, would be if you get bucked off, get back on again. Like this is this is just horsemanship 101. Um, but also, uh, I think it I think it really speaks to the reality of life. I always say like the, the the true mark of a cowboy is not if you get bucked off, but whether you get back on again. All right, that's that's the true mark of a cowboy. I, I've been you know, bucked off at various times in my life. And, and it, I tell you, um, getting back on is where the lessons learned, you know, and that's kind of the break, that's kind of the breaking point, if you, if you will. So I think that's kind of number, uh, kind of foundational rule mentality, both in Bronx world and the spiritual life. Yeah, if you, uh, Go ahead, Father, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, if you, I mean, if you find yourself um, just getting dumped in life for whatever reason, you know, falling into sin, I mean, life, just happens whatever do not be discouraged saddle back up you know i was listening to mike tyson the other day and mm -hmm. someone asked him so uh when you were younger did you ever get beat up he got oh yeah i got beat up a lot uh and uh, i got knocked down a lot and they asked him so you know you know he, they asked him about mike tyson got knocked down he goes yeah that's how you learn to fight yeah. that's how you learn and uh when i teach people how to surf if they have that first ride and it's just unbelievable they didn't really learn anything yeah okay, it's not until they fall that i can say okay you fell because your your mm -hmm. feet were too far to fall apart far apart mm -hmm. or you had too much mm -hmm. weight on your front foot or you know mm -hmm. uh, you didn't back up to make the board turn or you looked you looked where there was danger instead of looking where you needed to go mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and so you don't and in martial arts too when i t taught martial arts people would get it right and they didn't learn a thing it was only when you fall oh, really yeah. right that you learn and oh, one yeah, of the things yeah, yeah. No, I, I totally agree. I mean, definitely in life in so many aspects, whether it's surfing or riding. Um, but then same with the, then, you know, the spiritual life. And I, I was trying to think, I mean, there's just tons of examples um, of getting it wrong and uh, don't being dis don't get discouraged and just staying down, but get back up uh, and and learn from the past and let's go forward, you know. Exactly. You got to get back up and and, mm -hmm. and keep going. But I I know it's so true, because I've coached some world champions, and I was a you know ninja black belt and trained people in martial arts, and I learned it about myself. But teaching other people, especially mm -hmm. like in martial arts, there's this saying when someone's going through the the motion, and ninja is a combative art. You know, it's not like a really mm -hmm. even an art. You know, mm -hmm. um, and there would be a moment when they were doing something wrong. And also when teaching someone uh, how to do tandem surfing lifts, and I would say freeze, and then they would move. Okay, well, I, I can't teach you the lesson now because you, okay. you failed, and this is my big chance to teach you. Uh, okay, yeah. As a teacher, I'm looking for that moment of failure when mm -hmm. I can say, okay, now if you do this, if you move your hand 30 degrees mm -hmm. to the right, mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. will happen. And then all of a sudden mm -hmm. it magically happens. But if, but the Lord allows us to fail and he, and it, and he wants yeah. to teach us, use those as teachable moments. And, 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 you know, the other day a kid was coming, flying down Kalakaua, a tourist kid on a scooter, you know, these little scooters that they have, no motorized scooter. And he wiped out, you know, and uh, he, 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 he didn't wipe, he wiped out, but he slid in a beautiful way and popped up. He didn't tumble and break his arm, you know, he just, he did it elegantly. And he, as he looked up, he's kind of like feeling really stupid and looking, looking if anyone will make eye contact. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him and I said, good save. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. for him, that moment, instead of becoming a moment of hum humiliation, yeah. became like, that guy just said I was awesome, you know? So yeah. the Lord is affirming us, even, especially when we fail. If you are yeah. unfaithful, I am always faithful. So even when we're not faithful, God, is faithfully using those times to teach us. What else can you can you tell us about uh, horse horsemanship and? Yeah, no, good good call. All good stuff with that. I was thinking that kind of the second uh, step or, or rule is um, keep your mind in the middle. So that's that's the old bronc adage. I mean, just keep your mind in the middle. 
And maybe literally what it means is kind of when you when you ride, you kind of look more at the swell or the um, yeah the swells of your your saddle or the um, uh, yeah the anywhere just right in front of right in the main. You you want to just keep your mind there, you know, as you ride. And uh, when you ride in the, riding but, a bronc, when you ride in a bronc, when you ride in a bronc, that's yeah. that's the adage. Keep your mind in the middle. But what it even means further than that, especially in the, in the bronc world too, is uh, just own the buck you're in. Like, don't worry about the last one. Don't worry about the next one. Own the one you're in. Keep your mind in the middle of the moment. I suppose. Um, oh man, I use that all the time. But this is the deal. Like, okay, still so bronc world. If like in that eight seconds, I mean, you know, that time you're on the horse can be stretched out to a very long time. That's kind of part of the. That eight seconds can seem like a minute, right? It's like things yeah, slow down. I mean, if you if you get on, that's the deal. You want to you want to slow everything so down that you're just in it. But, um, the deal is in that moment if you're like in buck number three and you are thinking about the last buck where you just messed your spurring up you're screwed you're going to mess up the buck you're in right so if you're thinking about if your mind is in the past as you're in the middle of a buck like you're not there and you you're in danger zone also if you're like dreaming about how that buckle is going to look on your belt while you're you know three <laughs> seconds into the ride you're probably not going to make eight you know your mind is not in the middle you need to be right here um okay same with the spiritual life like keep your mind in the middle of the now right uh that's where our lord can be found and so often we get caught up in the in the worry of the future or the regret of the past and we we lose them both you know we're just we're just we're not intentional okay but uh but and and just to say you know the past and the future can be good insofar as they're brought into the now so the past can be good if i use it to inform the future here's what worked here didn't work Okay, that's fine. Yes, yes. But the uh, uh, but this whole dwelling in the past stuff. I mean, you're out of the saddle, man. You're out of the saddle. Yeah, you know, people who have been through tough relationships and they just can't let that go. You know, thank God for for being for for forgiving others and for going being able to do, go to confession. A lot of that is 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 that process of absolution, but also resolution and leaving that. You know, when when I'm golfing with my son who's an excellent surfer, excellent golfer, he'll say, he'll ask me about my last shot. And I, I, I've, I've always had this ability to just say next. Mm -hmm. And it actually, the last shot goes away from me. I'm not even thinking about it anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you missed that 10 foot putt and now you're worried about, yeah. now you, well, I blew it, so I'm oh, gonna yeah. miss my two foot putt. You gotta yeah. just let that, you just gotta mm -hmm. let that go. So people, when you've had um, times of failure in your life, Maybe it is your fault. Most of the time, like when the plane crashes, it's pilot error, as they say. Maybe it's it's not one error either. It's a culmination of small errors that get you into a, a bad situation. Let those things of the past learn from them. My mother taught me to learn from them, and then and then just say thank you very much. I've learned my lesson. Now you mm -hmm. can go. Mm -hmm. We're talking yeah, with Father you. Father Bryce Lundgren. He's the. What, what's your website again, Father? Yeah, WyomingCatholicCowboys.com. WyomingCatholicCowboys.com. Uh, yeah, and I would just add to that, you said it there, but the best way to keep your mind in the middle, in the now, where you can encounter God, is gratitude. Like, oh. you really, it really, it really just centers you, it roots you in reality, and it just, it just, it doesn't really matter about the future or the past, it's just now, thank you, Lord, for Amen. what you blessed us with. Yeah, so, let's talk more about that when we come back from the break, yeah. you know. You know, living in Hawaii, it sucks so much. You know, I, Cindy and I, when it, we see a rainbow every morning when we go for a coffee, mm -hmm. and we go, oh, not again, you know. And the trade winds blowing through the palm trees, not again. But very, basically, I remember times when things were really tough for me, and I would look up at the trade winds blowing through the palm trees, and I would just let that take me away into praising God and being thankful, and everything just got better. We're talking with yeah. Father Bryce Lundgren from Wyoming. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide. 
as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. We invite our mama bears to join our non-Facebook community created just for you, to share the journey with each other and to take the self-guided one-year course on the Virtues Plus, you have free access to all of the Long Ride Home TV show, all of the Bear Wozniak video version of our radio show, plus the Catechism in a Year videos, all at deepadventure.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. You know our TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, is motorcycle TV show. It's such a great uh, way for to help men that are Christians to get gritty and get real with life. And women love it, uh, by the way. they I think we have more women that love that show than we have men that, that love it. Because I think women are so real and so gritty. And we know if it's gritty enough and real enough for the men... The women will love it, too. But it's also a great evangelistic tool, and you can watch it on EWTN every week. We have uh, three seasons up on EWTN, and on Prime Video, you can watch the whole series. Uh, you can power watch it with your friends. But if you go, if you join uh, uh, the Mama Bears, uh, or if you go to, you know, go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears, or become a member of the Man Cave and the School of Manliness, you get all episodes of Long Ride Home as they're produced. So season three is just about to come up on Prime Video. There's only two seasons there uh, right now. But you get you get episodes from season four in Hawaii as we do the rough edit before months and maybe a year before EWTN even gets it. So if you want to have a, a great thing to watch as a family to power watch on a rainy weekend, watch Prime Video, uh, the version of our TV show Long Ride Home, or better yet, uh, join our join our ministry and you can uh, have, we'll give you access to all, it's all up on YouTube, but it's private. You can't watch it unless you get access to us, to it through our website. And then you can power watch it. And when your brother-in-law comes over, you can just kind of sneakily put it on. Father Bryce Lundgren is with us, the Wyoming cowboy priest. We've had so many men just kind of walk across the room and go, what's that? And start watching. Pretty, th- pretty soon they know we're t- when they find out we're talking about Jesus and about the Catholic yeah, Church. Sure, sure. So, Father that. Bryce, this is our last segment for this show, so we're mm-hmm. definitely going to have to have you back. Mm-hmm. But um, Cowboy Priest, he's, his, his homilies are part of our Bear School of Manliness. We use a lot of his five-minute homilies um, in our 36 months of lessons that fathers and sons can go through and that men go through together with us in the man cave. But uh, you have a... You have a uh, the homilies are posted every week, sometimes more. And you also post a lot of images of when you're out, go, uh, you know, cowboying. Uh, what's your website, Father? Yeah, WyomingCatholicCowboys.com. Well, and, and your ranch, which I can, I, I really, you know, Father, I'm not, don't mean to be presumptuous. Yeah. But I would, I just have this in my heart, in my mind, that, I'll, that there'll be a place where I can go for a week or two or yeah. maybe a few places uh-huh. and sit on that front porch yeah. And finish my next book, which is, by the way, uh, The Twelve Rules of Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Okay, and your awesome. ranch yeah. is up there in near uh, um, Devil's Tower, is it? Uh, so it's not. I mean, my I like to joke, my ranch is Wyoming. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I say that a little bit tongue-in-cheek. I am stationed up here in uh, Gillette, and then I run some cows up at Hewlett by Devil's Tower. And uh, that's a majestic my area. Place, yeah, my my family place is in Worland, Wyoming. That's where I'm from. Bighorn River runs through there. And oh, it's I the love greatest the place Horn. on earth, but that's probably because I was born and raised there. But we do, my folks and I, we, uh, or I mean, my folks and I go back there to stay with them. And, but uh, we, we got a little kind of, it's more of a gentleman place. And we do a lot of work around there, have a lot of fun. And it's very beautiful too. So Wyoming I'm is, thinking. Wyoming is. Uh, you know, I used to have a cabin up in Glacier Park, 
mm-hmm. on the North Fork of the Flathead River, two miles from Canada, looking over the Glacier Park um, with the whitefish chain behind me of mountains. And I would drive through Wyoming to get there, and I go, "Why am I? Mm-hmm. Why don't I just stop here? Mm-hmm. So beautiful yeah. in the early morning hours, mm-hmm. early morning, just before dawn, thousands of antelope." Oh, yeah. You know, and of course the buffalo and everything else. You were telling and sharing with us some lessons you've learned from yeah. bronc riding. Uh, we'll give us another one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is kind of, this is the one I probably use the most. Uh, and it's kind of an old, it's kind of an old rodeo adage. And it is on to the next one. Mm. You know, we are on to the next one. You you keyed on it there. But it it is so good in so many life situations but where does it come from okay i just i just uh i just drove 200 miles i paid a 75 dollar entry fee to get bucked off in front of a crowd okay <laughs> and, be, <laughs> and be done do after I, three seconds right <laughs> do, do i do i sit there and just waller in that or are we on to the next one let's go do it again you know and and that's boy i tell you what you it's kind of the Okay, I fouled that put off. I'm on to the next one. You learn, but we're we're going forward. I tell you, it is so key in life because it's a mental shift. It's like it's it's this to this, you know. From looking it's back to looking forward. forward. So my and I always got to bring this up because uh, my my grandpa when he was teaching us to drive, uh, part of that he would always he would always say, "Only back up as far as you need to." Right, you're you're backing up. Uh, in order to make a corn, he says, once you get back far enough to make the turn, make the turn. We're going forward. Backing up is good insofar as it allows you to go forward, but we get stuck in reverse. Or we go way too far back. We don't need to. Learn your lesson. We're on to the next one. Wow. That is just so, only back up as far as you need to. <laughs> and then just it's just cowboy wisdom. You know, I used to subscribe to a magazine, I think it was called Cowboy. And in it, it, it had segments of cowboy poetry, which is really interesting because you get the rugged, uh, rugged, tough guys. But and it's similar to surfing too. Surfing has that poetic element to it, you know. Sure. Uh, a lot of great music com- comes from surfing. You don't hear a lot of music about baseball or football, you know. Very interesting. But yeah. you know, and cowboys have that music too. Um, so it's so it's it's uh, part of that. But I remember getting my twelve and a half foot tandem surfboard piling it into an airplane, flying all the way to Australia, uh, paddling out, and not a single wave in 17 minutes, you know, oh, of, of yeah, the, okay. of the, or 20 minutes of the heat, and uh, and thinking, okay, well, what's next? Getting back yeah. in the plane, going yeah. back, going yeah. to it, oh, flying yeah. to another contest zone. You can't, you can't have, uh, you can't feel like you missed out because of blaming it on other circumstances. Or, or, but learning from what, what you can, learning what your attitude can be. What, what else can you teach us about? Well, I mean, okay, so the whole scenario in life then translated into the spiritual life. Um, I mean, you can get, so it's kind of even, uh, you know, the good, bad, and ugly, we're moving forward. Jesus is in front of us, you know, so I mean, whether, whether, uh, whatever, you know, I mean, I, in my world, like, whether I just gave a good homily or a bad homily, I'm on to the next one. Like I got it. Okay. We're, we're moving forward. And that's where our Lord is, you know? And, and so just so many assets, uh, aspects of life that this is applicable. Um, and I just do it all the time. It's like, no, we're moving forward. It is a mental discipline, but that's where our Lord can be found mm. is in, in the now looking forward. Cause he leads us. He doesn't push us. Sure. Yeah. So he's looking, in front back, of us. Lo- looking back doesn't help that much. We, we... No, there's, and like I say, there's, there's purpose in it insofar as it helps us move forward. You know, my wife has a saying uh, there's nothing worse than a moody cowboy after a bad ride. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it'll eat, you, it'll eat your lunch up if you allow it. Yeah. I mean, uh, and I could, I could talk all day about that, even though mine That's... was just kind of jokingly. But I can get on it and just get all sorts of worked up if I just keep on that rabbit trail of shoulda, woulda, coulda. Uh-uh. We're on to the next one. Yeah, and then and then let and then learning from that, and uh, and and then pressing on. You know, but when you think about the future, uh, I, I have found not that I don't get political, but I have found that the progressive liberal movement, they're all about worry about what's going to happen. Yeah. 
And and Jesus says, I know what I have in store for you, plans for peace, not destruction. A future reserved for you, full of hope. If you seek me, I will let you find me. If you seek me with all your heart, mm -hmm. I will let you find me. And that's where our heart needs to be. Just Jesus, Jesus, where are you in this moment? And just seeking the Lord out. I remember once, Father, uh, paddling out on a huge day at Rincon Point, biggest day I'd ever been in. Boulders were literally being bumped around by the surf. And finally powering out after about 25 minutes, I was able to get outside. And then the big one came. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I remember when it broke on, part, on top of me, my only, my only, all I, I just said Jesus really loud, <laughs> failed to catch my breath because I said that. <laughs> Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> but that that's just it. We have to know who we're turning to. Father, where can people find you? Yep, wyomingcatholiccowboys.com. Talking to Father Bryce Lundgren. You get to give us 30 more seconds of your pondering. Yeah, well, I mean, just as you keyed it on there, you said, Jesus, if you want to take it another step, Jesus, I trust in you. And if you think of the divine mercy image, there's many ways of looking at that thing. But our Lord, could, is, it's almost like he's he's in front of us backing up into the darkness and he's just say hey trust me keep your eyes on me trust me we're on to the next one you know keep your eyes on the Lord moving forward into the darkness the unknown yeah, his back you know, isn't to us his back isn't no, to us he's back no, he's up. in front of us yeah but he's but we're moving forward yep that's so cool so mm -hmm. cool our time with father bryce lundgren is already over but we can they can find you where again one more time Yep, wyomingcatholiccowboys.com. And if I were you, I would definitely watch the YouTube version of this show uh, mm -hmm. at our website, at our YouTube uh, channel, Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. Or you can go to our website, deepadventure.com, and subscribe to our newsletter. And then you get our, our video version of our radio show sent to you uh, the day of the it airs on EWTN. Father Bryce, thanks for being with us. Uh, we're going to do the, the normal shout-out. May the breath of the Holy Spirit be with you. Aloha. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak DeepAdventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift.